When was the last time you had a good cry? Uh, pass. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I don't know, a tear may have like rolled I'm on my a, cheek like in the not so distant past. I'm a freak frank and open cry. I've cried multiple times on this show. You have. Yes, it's really I have. It's beautiful. I don't know if it's beautiful. It's it kind is. of ugly cry. All right, we've belabored it enough. Sometimes when we cry, it's because we're sad. Sometimes it's because we're very, very happy. Here to explain the science behind all of these waterworks is Dr. Gail Salt. She's an associate professor of psychiatry at the New York Presbyterian Hospital's Weill Cornell School of Medicine. Uh, doctor, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me today. So there are three types of tears. What are they? Basically, there are tears that cleanse your eyes. Um, there are tears that keep your eyes moist. Those are ophthalmological issues. And they're very different from emotional tears. Emotional tears. Emotional tears, which can be related to sadness, stress, anxiety, but also, Tony, as you brought up, overwhelming joy, something that's poignant. People can cry at the movie Titanic. Oh, um, yes. You know, exactly. So those tears have to do with deep brain structure, emotional intensity, and subsequently, this release of tears. And they contain different compounds like stress hormones, like cortisol and endorphins, because they're risen and they come out in those tears. Those hormones are in the tears, they're in actually, the liquid? They're actually in the liquid, as, as opposed to moisture tears or reflex tears. Yes, they can be in, the, in them as the, well. There's a fourth type of tear, which is a crocodile tear, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but why do we do this? Why is the brain wired evolutionarily to release tears? Well, it serves some purpose for us. One is that evolutionarily, it signals to others around us that we're feeling vulnerable, that we're having a very difficult time. And it helps bring those people to us to support us, hopefully, um, to, to let them know that we need help. So that is helpful. It's also a release. So actually, you've heard the term, a good cry, right? Oh, yeah. You, yeah. you feel better after a cry. Those risen hormones that make you so stressed and so upset, they decrease after the cry, so you actually feel better. That's why you should have a good cry. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna stick with this. Uh, children cry, my kids cry over the most ridiculous things um, all the time. Why do young children cry over nothing? <laughs> And sometimes it's fake, right? Well, it's Manipulative. Well, I mean, but last night, for, for example, Eloise cried because she didn't like the soup I made. Right. Which was fantastic. Was it awful? It was universally beloved. It was good, except not universally because well, she not well. Liked yeah, it. but yeah, I'm sorry. Until well, you're 18, you're not part of the universe. <laughs> my she way. knew that seemed like nothing. But to Eloise, right, she was caught in a difficult position. You made this soup. Oh. She doesn't want to disappoint you, but she doesn't like it. So her needs versus your needs, what a plot twist, right? So for her, it is. it felt that way. But also, look, children have not yet been signaled that crying is not okay. And that's a good thing because they are able to release their emotions and they're able to experience them and talk about them afterwards. That's healthy. What's not healthy is we as a society shaming people for crying, especially boys, um, which then they shut down and try to hide and not experience their emotions or be in touch with them. And later, that comes out as anger, alcohol use, all, all kinds of problems. So it's good to be able to cry. Well, so, I mean, when, when Eloise is whi whining and crying are closely related for a parent, and sometimes when Eloise is crying a lot, I'll put her on the crying stair, and I'll be like, here's your stair for you. you want to have a good cry, you sit on the stair. Is okay. that a problem? Well, so you don't want to punish someone for crying, right? You want to let them cry, but you also don't want to reward them as a child. Like, oh, it's good you're crying, so now I give you all kinds of wonderful things, right? right. It's sort of in between. Like, this is an expression of your intense emotion, I understand that. I'm going to let you have your cry. And this is for adults too, right? We have a tendency in empathy to want to rush in and stop someone from crying because it makes us feel bad. That's not the best. You want to let them cry, sit with them. I understand you're having a hard time. I understand this is a struggle. And then afterwards, try to use your words yes. to explain what was going on, and how I can help you. Super okay, so really quickly, because yeah. we're running out of time, um, doctor, but eight in 10 people say that they've cried at work. What are some yes. tools people can use when yes. they don't want to cry at that very moment? Sometimes it's not good to cry in the moment, and you need to do grounding things. So for example, distracting yourself with an intense feeling state. Bite the inside of your cheek, not to break the skin. Uh, press on this webbing between your fingers to create an intense feeling. Looking up helps you not to and tear. And this doesn't do anything, right? No, that doesn't help. But looking up does. That's or the distract. Thing, I think. Yeah. Now, distract yourself. Start with 100, count back by sevens in your head, and then excuse yourself at some point and go have your cry. 
go in the bathroom, have your cry, you will feel better, recompose yourself, go back out. Dr. Gail Sots, thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it.